have a bit of a package backlog and I figured we could work through it together. So I have the mystery blind bag from St. Louis Art Supply. It was about $10. And then I've got a couple of studio restocks for just things that I commonly use or things that I found to be kind of intriguing. I've also got some watercolors and gouache from David's that I'd still like to swatch. So I figured now that my desk is finally clear, it's been covered in watercolor illustrations from just various things for like the past month. Now that it's finally clear, we can unbox these things and check them out together. I'm going to start with the little $10 mystery bag from St. Louis Art Supply. I think they were just trying to clear out some old stock. I like pretty much everything they have there, so I figured it'd be hard for it to go wrong. I guess if they sent me like oils supplies. You know, a medium I just never use and I don't have any interest in ever using. That could be more of a problem. So it's one of those eco mailers that has the, oh, what's the point of using an eco mailer? Oh, I see, okay, some of these things are, and then some of these things are packing, and that has my address, so that needs to go off to the side. Yeah, what is the point of having an eco mailer when you're gonna use a mylar mailer on the inside? So. This is actually something I take pretty seriously. I've been trying to move away from plastic-based packaging for my own store and towards more compostable and recyclable uh, packaging material. And uh, this is sure not ever, it's pretty, but this is never, ever, ever gonna biodegrade. So I don't know, even like, even like a glassine bag would be better than this, although it wouldn't be as mysterious. So, all the packing slip says is my address, which I'm not going to show you guys. And grab bag. It doesn't even have how much I paid for the grab bag. It's kind of like, what's the what's the point of that? But anyway, I'm, I think I might be being a little, oh, gross. That glue has started to like dissolve. I think I might be being a little bit mean spirited. So let's just, let's just move forward and check out. Whoa, that's cool. Oh, that's definitely $10 worth of stuff. Can you guys see all that? that is a, that's a packed little bag there. So that's pretty cool. All right, so inside our Lucky Dip goodie bag, we have a tiny, tiny little campus notebook. Now, those of you who watch my channel, y'all know I either love things that are ridiculously big or miniaturized, and this is like, basil size oh that's super duper cute we also have a oh that's interesting a tube of calligraphy gouache in gold pearl we have two copic multi-liners these are in a sepia color and a gray in point one we have this looks like a printmaking like a a printmaking squeegee so let's go with my printmaking supplies we have a uniball signo click pin in red we have an oto what are you are you leds what are you what are you I don't know. I don't know. I can't get it open and I don't know what it is. I think it contains leads, but I have no idea what this is. It doesn't shake. Now, Oto, to my knowledge, makes stationary and I really cannot get this open. I'm going to have to ask Joseph to get this open for me because I can't. But we also have, and I think these are like a random assortment of color pencils. Because it comes in this uni box, but I don't think they're just uni. So what are you? This is a good amount for 10 bucks. Okay, we got a Stabilo Carb Othello. We have another Carb Othello. We have another Carb Othello. So everything with the gray is going to be a Carb Othello. We have a Faber-Castell. This looks like a Polychromos. Those are nice. We have a Derwent Color Soft. Those are also nice. I like those. I think they've changed the branding on them since. We have some Derwent Watercolor, which I don't like as much. 
but that's okay. And then look, we have three more polychromos. Like just this, in my opinion, would be worth 10 bucks. Okay, so Joseph's gonna try opening it for me. Yeah. How does it open? I don't know. And uh, there are no instructions. <gasps> Why are you so much smarter than me? Wait, you're not even on camera. You can't even tell. Is there anything? anything in it, it might just be a lead holder, like a nice lead holder. Yeah, okay. That's still kind of useful, actually. Thank you. So if you did the St. Louis Art Supply $10 Lucky Dip, what did you get in your bag? Are you happy with it? I definitely feel like this was more than $10 worth. The only thing that I'm a little like eh about is the lead holder. Um, that would be maybe it's too small for the really long clutch pencil leads that need protection, but it's too, it's overkill for like this which i would just bring this along with me but if i wanted to bring like an assortment of leads and colors that could be a good way to do it it's nice it's just nicer than i typically need um and this is the thing that i think most people would have a hard time figuring out how to use or what they could use it for um it could also be used maybe to get tape to go down like 100 percent no bubbles underneath it and to make sure you get a really good seal on on the tape to whatever surface you're taping. Uh, I'm probably gonna use it as like a squeegee though. Um, there's been some really cool videos online of people doing like the squeegee paint art and this would be a great thing to play around with that. And then the cutest thing is the teeny tiny little campus notebook. I'm gonna set most of this aside because I do plan on swatching everything kind of all at once. But I did wanna open up <laughs> so it's so little it's so cute i love it <laughs> and they're like little sticky notes inside 10 out of 10 i love this this is great so let's move on to the other st louis art supply box this is the biggest box that we're taking a look at today and this is my little pen knife we can go ahead and Open this thing up. That was the packing slip. And they did, I can show you this, a cute little doodle that says, Thanks, Becca, with an alien. I love it. This one's a little more useful, although I'm going to have to fold it back before I show you guys. I'm actually going to set it to the side because I don't necessarily want it to spoil. I love the brown paper packaging. I use this with my pet rat, Basil. So, okay, hang on. Gotta laugh at myself a little bit. Do any of you guys have a problem with when you look at things online, they look bigger or smaller than they end up being in person? And I know they come with measurements. I have no one to blame but my ADHD self. I thought this thing was going to be much smaller. This size is fine. That kind of justifies the price. This is a wash bottle. And it comes with... It, it's in there. Man, is it in there. Okay, there we go. Alright, so what this can do is... And I'm going to need to attach this to this i believe that's not going to want to stay though not very helpful as a leash anyway so what this does <laughs> there we go awesome yes all right so oh, i'm gonna have to snip that too <laughs> what this is is you fill it with water and then you press it and you can use it to rinse things out it can also be a helpful way to carry a fair amount of water with you say for plain air painting and you can just fill a little bit it's a little bit easier to control if you have shaky hands like i do or if you have other fine motor problems so this is the sort of studio supply that can be really helpful for filling like wash containers where you don't necessarily want to pour it as my hands get shakier, I've been looking for more things like this just to make it easier so I don't make a huge mess. I also have a bunch of pipe. I really thought these were going to be smaller. A bunch of pipettes. These are billow style pipettes. And I got these because I really, really like this little billow style water bottle that I also got on St. Louis Art Supply. I use this thing like 
all the time now. What's great about it is, and I can't really demonstrate because it's going to send water all over the table and I've been there, done that, is you can suck up just a little bit of water and then control how much goes into your like your watercolor wash or to reactivate colors it also can be sealed so it's really portable it's just great but i try to keep just clean water in this because it's kind of hard to, to clean out so i was hoping these would be smaller and i could use these like color to color <laughs> they're pretty big they're still gonna get used i mean they say five milliliter but look at this tiny thing this says three milliliter right and it's much smaller then the five milliliter. I don't understand how this can be three milliliter and this can be five milliliter, right? Like just compare the sizes. So I do read the measurements. I'm, I'm not that ridiculous. Finally, in this box from St. Louis Art Supply, we have one last thing other than our free rat toy paper. We've got a box from Schminky. And no, Schminka, sorry. And no, it doesn't contain Galaxy Blue. It actually contains, come on you, come on out. Time to go. All right, two limited edition colors. We have Yinmin Blue and we have yin tea co red so you guys probably remember a while back like a couple years ago my friend kabocha sent me a tube of course limited edition yin min blue it had to be special ordered and kabocha was like right on top of it i would not have been able to take a look at it for you guys if it hadn't been for kabocha so big thanks to kabocha um and when i saw that schminka was doing Yin Min Blue now. Kabocha and I started conspiring together and I was like, you know what, I'll get it this time and I'll send you a half pan to play around with. So I want to compare the two Yin Min Blues and I'm excited to play around with the first not blue color that has been made from the Yin Min pigments because I know that it is capable of producing a range of colors and these are supposed to be more light fast and they're supposed to have, at least with the blue, they have a high reflectivity which has some cooling properties. They're just supposed to be really interesting pigments and I've been waiting for them to come out with, well A, to make Yin Min Blue more accessible because it's still pretty expensive and pretty rare. These two tubes were $30. So thank you to my patrons for your support because these are expensive and they are probably not a necessity in your palette. Uh, I didn't find Yin Min Blue to be this color that, first of all, Yin Min Blue, at least the core Yin Min Blue, it's very pretty in person, but it doesn't, it records like garbage and it photographs like garbage and it doesn't scan so great either. I don't mean it looks ugly. I mean, you can't see what makes it special except in real life. So if you're like me and you do a lot of art for reproduction and a lot of art for YouTube, Yin Min Blue is kind of, kind of not really that exciting because it's not going to appear on camera the way you can see it in real life. You can't really adjust the camera to do that. It has something to do with the reflectivity of the pigment itself. And it really just kind of reminds me of like true lapis from the Renaissance before we were able to synthesize lapis in ultramarine blue and how rare it was and how special it was. And I actually still have an illustration that I'm looking at right now that kind of harkens back to how they used to use lapis that I wanted to use for my Yin Min Blue test and you can tell I've been busy but anyway I'm really excited about these I'm not as much a pigment nerd as some people are the, the chemistry and the physics while it's exciting and enticing I just don't have the background for that but I did want to kind of play around with these and show them to you guys and then finally, we have a package from Jackson's. And I know what's in this. I mean, I knew what was in all of them except for the, the Lucky Dip. But I know what's in it. I This is just a restock. But I still wanted to share it with you guys anyway. And give you guys a chance to kind of see what I got in my palette. Uh, speaking of, though, if you're really curious about what's in my watercolor palette, I have a video out where I made a vlog of me making a custom new palette and uh, it is funny and it is a little bit ridiculous but I'm really happy with the end result palette um, it's one of those things where it's like I'm, I'm glad I did it but it took too long and you can probably buy a better version oh okay 
this is gonna this is gonna fight me so I'm gonna pause this and get back to you guys when it's open that took some effort okay so there is a receipt right there at the top do a little bit of sleight of hand because they always have my address but they don't always have the prices this one does have the prices so I ordered some Magello Mission Gold watercolors and not like a, a huge number of them, but rather colors that had been out of stock the last time I ordered from Jackson's and you guys kindly recommended that I check again. And they happened, I mean, they'd been out of stock for like several months and they did actually restock. So we have Compose Rose, Bright Rose, Quinacridone Permanent Rose, and then finally marine blue. So some of these are colors I haven't been able to get a hold of since Jerry stopped selling Magello because I've got a set of the Magello tubes and then once the colors I use all the time are gone, it's hard for me to find them open stocks. So I am really glad to be able to kind of refill some pans that have been sitting empty for a while. And then I mentioned some paints from David's, which is my local brick and mortar. So I have some gouache because Took me forever, but I finally decided to bite the bullet and just start using gouache if I'm doing a big background fill and I want like a nice flat layer of color. I've actually tried the red out and it works so good for that. So I picked up some colors that either I'm going to be using in the immediate future for a project I'm working on or are colors I would use because I do a lot of florals and that sort of thing. So navy blue, cypress green, ice blue, and emerald green plus some PWC colors in Areolan, Permanent Yellow Deep, Cadmium Yellow Orange, and Cadmium Yellow Light. So I figured since we're, um, why do I shed so much? I shed so much, you guys. Um, I figured since we were going, or I wanted to uh, swatch and talk about these things with you guys today, it'd be a great chance to get those David's colors swatched and talk about those as well. Before we start swatching, I do need to do a little bit of surgery. And this is always tricky because you don't want to cut off too much of it because then it won't work properly. There we go. I think, I hope, that was just the right amount. Comes with this little cap. Come on. Because once you've cut it off, you can't... Yes! It, well. <laughs> oh, this thing is not made that great. Why? Why? Get on there. All right. I, I, I guess. I guess. Anyway. So, and I am going to fill it. And it looks like we have a fill line right up here. I'm going to do this in order because it'll just be easier for all of us, the ADHD and the non-ADHD, to be able to figure out what's going on. So I am going to start with the St. Louis Art Supply. I have here a Canson XL watercolor sketchbook, so it should be good for most things. Set those aside. All right, can everybody see? Hopefully, good. All right. Or at least you can hear. I'll narrate for you all. So this was the lucky dip because the other thing, we'll talk about that again in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the non-watercolor stuff and then we'll move towards the watercolor stuff. So we have some polychromos which are immediately going to go live with my other nice color pencils. And then we have Carb Othello which I, I don't know, I don't really use these. so. It'll be interesting. And something I like is that the colors they picked kind of go together. Like you could use this for a limited color challenge. You could use this for a limited color challenge. You could even use these for a limited color challenge. Like it's not like you got two pastels and like a gray, which you could use, but that would take more doing. I think these are pastels, but I'm not actually, oh yeah, they're pastels. Now I, I don't really like, I mean I do have some pastels, I have some pan pastels. I'm kind of picky about pastels because they put up a lot of dust and they tend to smear and I just, 
am not like a big fan of those. So if you are more familiar with these types of hard sort of chocolate, chalky pastels, let me know what your favorite brand is. Which brand is the brand to look for? I don't know where Carbothello falls in there. So next we're going to move to the Polychromos. Now these are kind of softer, more buttery color pencils. I know Holbein have, in fact, I have some of the Holbein ones, and those are also super soft and buttery. So if you're like me and you have like a fair amount of repetitive restraint damage from, you know, decades of drawing, buttery color pencils are probably going to do you a little bit better, be a little bit easier on your hands, blend a little easier, go down a little quicker than the harder, more waxy color pencils. At least that's my experience and my personal opinion. Obviously, different people have different experiences, and I would love to hear what y'all's are. But I'm pretty happy with these. Also, these tend to be expensive, so in a $10 Lucky Dip, to get four of these is pretty thumbs up. Also, I appreciate that they sent ivory, mostly because I'm like on a weird grail mission. So then we're going to take a look at these. So the Copic Multiliners, they're going to be alcohol marker safe. They're going to be waterproof. These are super duper fine so if you like to do you know art with really fine little details these could be good and then we have a red signal oh, right so good Joseph and I will probably end up fighting over that one I steal all the regular pins because as an artist I never have regular pins because I don't think to buy regular pins can you guys relate? Are you the same way? And then finally, we have the calligraphy gouache. Ugh, why is that word so hard? In gold pearl. Now, I actually have a couple of other gold gouaches and have even set them up in half pans because at some point, I would like to be able to include a gold, not like a gold flake, but a gold pigment in my Houdat art kits. So I'm testing out a few. So this will be a nice little... Now, what makes it calligraphy gouache? Please let me know. My friends who do brush calligraphy, because <laughs> I can't even, like, regularly write my name and have it be legible, let alone calligraphy. Be tacky and just, you know, try to whip up some cream consistency. It's fine. Um, it might be a little looser. Then some of my other gouaches, I may also have a little too much water on this brush. And since this is a metallic, it's a very pretty metallic. Again, a little thinner than um, some of the other ones I've tested, but otherwise fine. Since this is a metallic, I'm going to go ahead and go rinse this brush off in the sink. Okay, so now for the Derwent, oh wait, I forgot we also have a Derwent Color Soft. This is another one of the softer, more buttery, it's a little bit more dusty than some of the other color pencils, but again, repetitive wrist strain problems, this is going to be a little bit easier on you. I know they rebranded, I cannot remember to what, so let me know. And then on to the Derwent Watercolor Pencils. So when it comes, I have tested a bunch of watercolor pencils over the years have them here on the channel if you guys would like to check it out i'd really appreciate it and i like the derwent ink tents a lot better than i like the derwent regular watercolor pencils i just i don't know i don't see the point of them honestly they're just better contenders out there for me that just do a better job i like um, in terms of like less expensive watercolor pencils because um, they can get kind of pricey. I do prefer Super Color 2 or the um, Faber-Castell Albrecht Dur. You guys can see there's just not a lot of pigment. When you, when you activate them with water, there's not really a lot of color there. They're not really very rich. And something I like about the Ink Tents is they are even richer. Like that color, once you add water, it is very like wha-bam color. Now the problem with Intense though is it's indelible. So once you've wet it and then it dries, it's not going anywhere because it is an India ink base rather than being a true watercolor. So moving on to the bigger box of St. Louis Art Supplies, we have the Cartel Wash Bottle. I'm just going to give 
I really do not like how easily that spake. Oh, mine cracked. Well, that makes that useless. All right, I, I will demonstrate this for you guys while being kind of upset and maybe getting in contact with St. Louis Art Supplies to see if they can send me another nozzle or I can fix it, maybe with some Sugru. Anyway, you squeeze it, it goes up this tube, so it pulls from the bottom, and very easy to control how much water comes out if yours isn't cracked, like mine is. It's pretty sad about that, actually. So, clean that up and be sad about that. And then we have the billow style ones. These billows are really very thin and kind of cheaply made compared to, I think Kuratake made this. This just feels sturdier. This feels really just kind of, but it sucks up a lot of water. And then you can like force propel it out. I'm gonna be mad about the wash bottle for a while cause it's been out of stock and then it finally went back in stock and then my nozzle broke and I could probably jerry rig something, but it broke right there on camera. I didn't even get to demonstrate for you guys. Kind of salty about that. So then we have the Yinmin Blue and the Yintiko Red. Now this one, I'm kind of hesitant to show you guys, mostly because I want to do a video on it. These were kind of expensive. And I want that like crispy first opening. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to record this in such a way that I can reuse it. So here I have two new Yinmin color. Well, one's a new Yinmin color and one is an older Yinmin color. Schminka has just started selling Yinmin colors and these are a limited edition. I got these off of the St. Louis Art Supply site. How many they have, your mileage may vary, that sort of thing. So here we have 806 Yinmin Blue, 807 Yintiko Red. So this is one of the first not blues that they have produced and manufactured uh, from the Yinmin pigment line. Um, I know it is possible to make a variety of colors using this base pigment. So I'm really excited to see what comes out of it. It has some unique properties. That said, in my experience with the core Yinmin Blue, which we're going to talk about later today, um, it's, it doesn't show up as well on camera in photos or in video as it does in real life. So if you are a reproduction artist or someone who most of your work is scanned or photographed or recorded, this may not be the best fit for you. It's also pretty dang pricey. These two tiny tubes were 30 bucks each. So big thank you to my amazing patrons on Patreon. It is because of your support that I'm able to do somewhat ridiculous things like this. So it being Schminka, it has a fairly easy to open tube. No exploding, which is nice. And we're going to put a little dot here. I'm also going to swatch on cotton rag paper. So just keep an eye out for that. And then the red, it's a little drippy, a little swatcher. That's a really pretty color. I don't know. It's not a red, not by a long shot. It is a pink. It's like, I think um, St. Louis Art Supply, and I will talk about that in more detail later, refer to this as kind of like a potter's pink, but being more permanent. So here is our blue. And this is on a cellulose paper, so it's not going to reflect the color as well as if we had done it on a cotton rag paper. But like I said, don't worry, I will do it on a cotton rag paper. So it granulates, has a really pretty granulation. It's kind of in real life, it is kind of in between an ultramarine blue and a cobalt blue. I think people have described it as the closest a blue is going to get to being a neutral, not being warm, not being cool. I feel like that's a pretty fair assessment. So here is our other color, Yin Tico Red. And it's really pretty, but it's basically the same color as PWC's Brilliant Pink. So, you know, unless you're like 
a pigment nerd or a watercolor nerd or a YouTuber or a completionist or there is a specific maybe color safe reason for art watercolor that's going to be on display I don't necessarily think you need to spend 30 bucks to get this color there are comparable colors on the market like it I mean it's really a cool novelty and that's why I think Schmincke is doing it as a limited edition to see you know how much demand there actually is for it so the tube for our Yinmin blue has five stars of light fastness and it is pretty opaque and I have to look up what the triangle means I think it has to do with the staining properties of it made in Germany I'm looking for pigment information not seeing it on here could look it up online we do that later and then Yintico red is five stars of light fast this is semi-transparent you see how we have the box and there's just a line through it and I guess it is the same amount of staining as our blue which makes sense same pigment base oh here we go okay Y I N T I C O and this one is Y I N M N so there are our Yinmin blue and our Yin Tico red that wraps it up for St. Louis Art Supply. So I'm going to move this over, move that as well, and we'll take a look at the colors from Magello from Jackson's. Now, I had asked on my community tab earlier if people knew of any vendors who were selling Magello. I know Amazon has it. It is expensive on Amazon. Blick like has the listing but you can't buy it and at the time Jackson's was hit or miss out of stock I was having a hard time finding the tubes I could find the half pans which I will review the half pans for you guys at another time so keep an eye out for that so I was you know looking for other sources because I don't know what's going on to make them hard to get but they're getting kind of hard to get but fortunately Jackson's did restock now Jackson's is hmm I want to say the nether it's not located in the US so um, I have noticed with art supplies that I ship that sometimes they the watercolors end up like separating a little bit and kind of exploding on me ooh that is bright rose and that is really bright I was looking for or I am looking for an alternative to opera that is a little bit more permanent because while most of my work is meant to be reproduced, they're either comic pages or I, you know, turn them into things or I share them online. I do like to sell originals and it is nice to have some nice hot pinks that aren't going to like fade in two years. So that's Bright Rose, then Compos Rose, and this is kind of a cooler bluer rose. Ooh, this one has already... <laughs> okay all right so it formed a bit of a plug at the top I'm gonna have to set this one aside and use this little bit that's coming out to my benefit to refill the pan that's in my palette this is kind of wasteful because I don't need all this that's just what came out that one's probably been sitting on a shelf somewhere all right so that's compose rose and this is almost like a magenta it's a little warmer than a magenta but it's a good color for florals that isn't going to immediately start to fade on you so it's a color I use pretty frequently and then Quinn permanent rose so in my experience and I'm sure I'm sure somebody can um, correct me if I'm wrong just be nice about it I have found that Quinn's tend to be more permanent since I mean not because they're a synthetic but they just seem to be more permanent in my experience I was hoping this is very red this is basically uh, cherry red from Holbein which is their quinacridone red so that is not really a rose that is it has some rose qualities but so does cherry red and then finally marine blue which I haven't been able to replace in years, so I'm excited. We really don't need much. 
This is a really cool blue. I mean, it's a cool color, but it's also a cool color. It's um, like a darker version of a phthalo blue. So if you paint a lot of florals or uh, maybe even like ocean sort of stuff, this can be a really good one. And like now that we have, so Magello is a South Korean company and I've noticed that a lot of Asian watercolors tend to be very finely milled like Turner, Holbein, PWC, Magello. So you're not going to get as much granulation from Magello as we're seeing with the Schmincke colors. And to be fair, those are different pigments and we're also taking a look at like some very sort of synthetic sort of colors. But definitely not going to see the granulation with Magello that you would see with Schmincke. And then I want to show you guys a mix I just happen to like because I already got a lot of paint on my palette. Use it up. Okay, so this kind of a, a cool blue with this kind of like um, a cooler but still more like a hot pink, if that makes any sense, makes such a pretty purple. Look at that color. Isn't that pretty? I think it's pretty. So that is marine blue with our bright rose. That about wraps up our Jackson's art. So then finally we've got the watercolor and the gouache that I picked up at David's. So we're going to start with the watercolor and rotate this. And since this water is uh, pretty purple, I'm going to go switch that out for some clean water. So we're going to start with the watercolor. They are all PWC colors. And if you're not familiar with PWC, first off, I've reviewed them here on the channel so you can see my full thoughts on them. Second of all, at least at David's, which is my local art supply store, these are really affordably priced for professional grade watercolors. The price for what you get is so good that if you live in the Metro New Orleans area, I really can't see why you would go with student grade unless you wanted a lot of colors because a 12 pack of these, the, the five mixing pack, and then, you know, the few additional colors you're going to need to be able to mix, you know, the basics for learning how to paint. It's very affordable. It's almost cheaper than going student grade. It is a little more expensive, but it's going to last you so much longer. The color is going to be so much better and you're going to enjoy painting with it more. Is it my favorite brand? I don't know. I like them. I have a lot of PWC colors in my palette. I don't have like, there's like a couple of brands that I like. Ooh, okay. A little bit of our gum Arabic in there, but you can see it's a really clear gum Arabic. Just trying. That's a lot of gum Arabic. Come on. All right. Uh, they set up really well in half pans, but as I mentioned with the Magello, this is a, another South Korean brand. This is made by Shin Han. Um, they're very finely milled, so if you're looking for a lot of granulation, this isn't necessarily the best brand for you, but that said, if you're just getting started, they are super responsive. They're really buttery. They set up well in a half pan. They reactivate nicely from a half pan. Like, they're so good. They're so good. So that is Cadmium Yellow Light, and I do wanna point out, though, that some of these colors, like the Cadmiums and the Cobalts, can be a toxicity issue. You do want to be careful when you're disposing of the water. You also want to make sure you don't get the paints on your hands. So next we're doing Aerolian. And this is almost like a new, not really like a new gamboge, but it's kind of like an Indian yellow in that it is a warmer, transparent yellow. This one even looks like it's got some hints of green in it. And then we have permanent yellow deep. Try not to waste too much paint. That's why you guys often see me just like take from the top with my brush as I'm trying to be thrifty.
And if you're new here, I'm a watercolor illustrator and a watercolor comic artist. And that's one of the reasons I lean really heavily on these convenience colors is when you're painting four to six panels on a page and you're painting, you know, two to four pages at a time, you could mix a lot of paint. And wow, that is a lot of gum Arabic. <laughs> that's all the gum Arabic. Okay, here, let me, because if we lose all our gum Arabic, that is part of the humectant that helps keep these nice and and malleable so we can get them out of the tube so let me see if that helped not much sometimes they just separate when they're like sitting because at david's they're hanging so you know the good grief that is so much look how much gum arabic came out of there i mean to be fair there would be like a fair amount of gum arabic in your watercolor you don't want a watercolor that doesn't include any binder whether it's honey gum arabic aquazole or you know a dextrose because like then you just got pigments and they're just gonna like flake off your paper but you don't want all your gum arabic to just float to the top separate out so that was cadmium yellow orange so we've got some really nice pretty with the exception of this aleolin which looks like it wants to be an olive green some really pretty bright vibrant yellows which as i am painting more spring themes and more summer themes these are the kind of colors that i really want i'm going to flip the page and we can get started with the gouache i'm also going to test them out on this it's a scrap of paper that I have it was white watercolor and I needed it for a black background and before buying gouache or instead of gua buying gouache I just did a bunch of layers of dark blue and black and it took forever so we're gonna use gouache on top of this if you're not familiar with gouache gouache is an opaque watercolor medium that is meant to be applied more thickly it's meant to be mixed to about the consistency of heavy cream and then applied from there rather than watercolor where it is very very diluted it's also kind of a matte art supply which means it isn't going to have like a glossy finish to it you can buy gouaches that include acrylic those are acrylic gouaches those are going to be permanent once they've dried we're messing with whole buying gouache today. They do make an acrylic gouache, but that is not what we're looking at. Gouache used to be, it is having a resurgence in popularity, but it was really popular for graphic arts, um, like graphic design or character design. And you guys might be familiar with Mary Blair. She worked pretty heavily with gouache. I am not a big gouache person. I'm not pretending to be. And I got these, as I mentioned earlier, so I could do flat lay backgrounds for watercolor illustrations rather than, ooh, do not spray, apply, do not spray apply this product because it contains cadmium, which is known in the state of California to cause cancer by means of inhalation. And considering I've lost multiple members of my family to lung cancer and uh, maybe, maybe not. If you are concerned about cadmium, you of course don't have to buy products that contain cadmium. There are plenty of alternatives. However, there hasn't necessarily been found, there hasn't a correlation between watercolor and gouache, water-based mediums and cadmium and cobalt poisoning. There hasn't really been correlations for that. It's mostly things that are aerosolized and then could be inhaled, or if you were to paint it on the walls, or if you were doing large scale murals. So we're not talking a shields green situation here, but you do want to treat toxic chemicals with the respect that they deserve. And you want to, the watercolorist in me always wants to make this too watery. So that is cypress green. Little boxes for this, because my intended use case is just flat fills so that I'm not using so much watercolor and so much patience trying to achieve the same thing. Then emerald green. And I'm not pointing these things out to scare anybody. Um, I just know that a lot of people have learned how to do art by school of internet, which is 
I guess comparable to being self-taught, except you're willing to admit that other you're learning from other people rather than pretending like you taught yourself everything. But um, sometimes that kind of information just isn't as disseminated as it should be. So, you know, you want to treat your art supplies with respect. You want to dispose of them properly, but also like you don't have to be afraid of them. If you want to use cadmium free products, though, by all means, go for it. Next is ice blue. When I used to paint on the floor and my cat would uh, help himself to my watercolor water and chew on my brushes. I didn't use cadmium based paints, but I work at a desk now and he, <laughs> I don't leave these things unsupervised. So it isn't really a problem. Then cadmium red deep, that's our trouble child here. And this is a beautiful color. I've already used this for a project and was really happy with the results. And I'm not, try and put down anyone who is school of internet by the way I think it's wonderful that's why I make the content that I make I just am not a fan of people pretending like they didn't use the internet to teach themselves and yet they want to turn around and make money selling art coaching classes and then finally navy blue so these are going to be more opaque than watercolor you can water them down and use them similarly to watercolor. Um, you're not gonna be able to do as many layers as you would with really transparent watercolors because it will start to muddy up. But even if you're a watercolorist like me and you like to do watercolor illustration, these can be also great for adding highlights or adjusting the color or for <laughs> popping some rim lighting on there. So I'm gonna let this dry off to the side make some space and change my water and I'll be right back. We are gonna do a really easy bookmark today. So what you're gonna need for this is you're going to need some dark colored watercolor paper. You can either go ahead and apply black watercolor or black gouache to it and let it dry out totally. Or you can buy one of the existing colored or black watercolor papers that are on the market. You are going to need masking tape. I have it in two sizes here. This is to affix it. To this and then this is for the stripes you're going to need your gouache and I've got navy blue cadmium red deep ice blue emerald green and cypress green they're all Holbein gouache colors you're gonna want a flat brush a cup of clean water and a palette to do your mixing with and we're gonna start out by taping down our little bookmark Once you've got it taped down and smoothed down, we're going to switch over to our other size of masking tape. And I'm going with really skinny masking tape because I thought that'd be kind of fun. And you want to do straight lines in whatever direction you want. I'm going to go from top to bottom. You want to make sure your masking tape is on there good. So I'm using this scraper here from 3M. You could use a credit card, anything that'll help get it really flush. You also want to make sure your tape is longer than your bookmark. That way it goes edge to edge and also help hold it down while it's drying. I did not care about them being evenly spaced. In fact, I like the idea of them being kind of unevenly spaced. It kind of reminds me of 60s art. So that's the direction I'm going in, but you can go in whatever direction you want to go in for this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go color by color and that way I'm not going to pollute my water as quickly. And I am going to start with our brightest color, the red. Now I have four colors here. So depending on how you want to do this, you may want to do an alternating pattern of you know, all your colors in rotation, or you may want to make it more random. I'm going to make it a little bit more random. And I'm going to use my flat watercolor brush. You want to add just enough water that you have the consistency of cream. And if it isn't opaque enough, let it dry and apply another layer on top of that.
Even though gouache is an opaque watercolor medium, you may find you need a couple of coats, especially on darker papers like this, to really get what you're looking for. That's pretty normal. You may also find that it heavily pollutes your water, so you may wish to use two wash cups for this, or you may just want to switch out your water regularly. I'm going to let this red dry before I progress on to our other colors. Once it's had a chance to dry, you can remove your masking tape. I do want to point out if you did your layers too thickly, they'll start to flake you guys, like you guys can see here. And you can also get some discoloration. So we're not going to get that like really nice, rich matte finish with these that you might get with like an acrylic gouache. I think these problems just wouldn't happen with an acrylic gouache. So if you want like perfectly matte, go with acrylic gouache, but we went with a traditional watercolor gouache today. So I'm going to show you one. We'll do one reveal and then I'll peel them in time lapse. Oh, that looks really cool. I like how that turned out. I'm excited to see how the rest of this peels. Look how neat that turned out. And we did that with gouache. A lot of the bookmark designs I've done as part of my Stash Buster tutorial series have kind of femme vibes for them, but this could be great if you're looking for more masculine vibes or you want to kind of tailor it to the person because just tweaking the colors you use is really going to change how it looks. And you can use your masking tape to do diagonals. You can do a plaid pattern. You have all kinds of fun options that you can play around with and explore. So that was the accumulation of four different different art supply hauls. Two from St. Louis Art Supply, one from Jackson's, and one from David's Art Supply. Which was your favorite art supply today? I was really thinking I was going to love the Klein bottle-esque cartel bottle, but I have to fix the broken we're going to use E6000 and try to fix it. So that's kind of a bummer there. Um, but what I was kind of surprised that I liked was the 3M scraper. So I was thinking I could use this for like printmaking, but to get like a nice tight seal on masking fluid, this thing works really well. It seems like a gimmick, but it works. So I would have never bought this for myself. That's kind of the beauty of blind bags. It gets you to try things you wouldn't have thought of getting for yourself or you might have thought was a bit of a waste of money. Y'all, this is going to get used on like all my comic pages and like all my illustrations because it really gets that tape down nice on the paper. You're not putting your hand oils on the paper. It's a little more flexible than a credit card and you're not risking showing your credit card information if you're recording like I am. This thing is kind of cool. I'm glad they sent it to me. So this might be the unsung hero of today's haul video. Also the like the tiny campus notebook. This is so, rid so ridiculously cute. Um, as for the gouache, it works well, but I think my application was kind of lacking. We have some bubbling, some peeling. If you know what I did wrong, let me know. And please don't just say use acrylic gouache because I want to work with traditional gouache because of its compatibility with watercolor and acrylic gouache you know, once it dries, it's indelible. That's not really what I'm looking for. So I'm talking about like 
traditional gouache advice and tips here because that is a medium that even though I learned how to do watercolor through school of the internet, so reading other people's blogs, watching other people's videos, my friends teaching me and a whole lot of experimentation and reading books, I have even less experience with gouache. So if you want to send me some channels that do gouache stuff, send them my way. I'd be happy to check them out. So um, I did some refills. That was cool. I got to play with some blind bag art supplies. I need to go put those away. I need to fix the spigot on our wash bottle. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you guys again soon with a review, a tutorial, or maybe an art supply haul. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And let me know in the comments which is your favorite of today's haul.